Hey guys, what's going on today? Bojo here, and we are back with our Vancouver Canucks GM mode. I know it's been a while, guys. So, uh, where we left off last time with this Vancouver Canucks team, because I have to remember as well, we are, I think it's a couple days before the trade deadline, correct? I just want to double check on that. Yes, it is. So, two games left before the, before the uh, trade deadline hits. And uh, we are sitting at 27, 26, and 9. And I just remembered I looked over the comment section for you guys last time asking you if we should make any trades or if we should actually make a trade and go for it this season because we are looking to possibly make a playoff run by getting a third seed in our division or a wild card spot. So a lot of you guys were saying to go for it. A bunch of people were also saying to trade Eddie Lack. And honestly... It wouldn't be a bad idea to do that, but I don't know how we're going to upgrade our backup goaltender position anyway whatsoever by doing so. But uh, we looked over some players last time that I do want to double check on and make sure I want to make a trade for. But I think the best possible person to trade for was Shane Doan on the Arizona Coyotes because of the fact that... Skiers matching block. is going to be Shane Doan. Who does have uh, a lot of points so far this year. I think he has, not Henrik Tolander. He has uh, 55 points so far this year with 25 goals. So you know what? He's been scoring goals, which is good, which is something we need. And you know what? He also can bring that uh, defense uh, of aspect to the team. 5.3 mil for one more year. So he does have one more year left, which is good. If we can drop him off on free agency or whatever if we want to for next year. If we decide to keep him or not. But... I think Doan would probably be the best possible person to go for right here. I think we do have to make salary, though. Do we have to make salary? No, we do not have to make salary cap for this. So we're going to be a little bit under. We will we'll be under the cap, which is good. So if we want to make the trade for Shane Doan here. So Shane Doan, I, was, I honestly think, is the best possible person to go for this at the uh, best possible time here. So obviously Shane Doan is only going to go up to the R, which is good. You will have to give up that much for Doan. Um, let's see. So if we want to make a trade for Shane Doan, who do we have to give up here? Let's go to rookie goaltenders first. So Polvika and Auger, obviously we're not trading those guys. Rookie skaters. Shinkrook stays. Horvat stays. Uh, Jacob Vertanen stays. Jeremy McCann stays. Gaunts. Jensen. Weiser maybe could go. Because we do have a lot of, uh... A lot of really good forward prospects here. I think we could possibly give up one of our forward prospects here. Maybe Weiser goes. Tim Weiser, 90 overall, uh, 70 overall, 20-year-old playmaker. I think could be one of the person that we go that goes here. Um, yeah, Mitchell Lindholm. I'd rather keep him because he's a grinder. Uh, Gertzen. Yeah, I think Weiser would definitely be somebody that we put on the block here, not Subban Weiser. Tim Weiser we can throw onto that deal and then maybe like a draft pick or something along those lines. We don't have a first. Uh, we have a second, remember, because we got that first. Montreal has our first. Uh, we do have a second, though, and Ottawa's third, Colorado's fourth. A lot of picks for this year, though. A lot of picks. A lot of depth round picks, which is good. Um, but I don't want to give up a second for Doan, that's for sure. I'd rather give up players. I would rather give up players. What's Eddie Lack's trade value at? Uh, it's pretty good, but there's no point in doing that because I don't want to call up Auger and Polvika and have them struggle as well. Is there any defenseman that we can maybe trade? Let's see. So Fowler, no. Hamus, Edler, Tanev, Corrado, Spiza, Stanton. Uh, where is Stanton? Stanton's playing right here. We're playing Stanton instead of Corrado, right? Corrado's actually up to an 81 overall, same thing as uh, Stanton, but I believe we're playing Stanton instead of Corrado because of that defensive defenseman aspect. Maybe we should bring Frankie Corrado up and play him instead. His defense isn't much better, and his shot I don't think is that much better than Stanton's. Stanton's a harder shot. I think he might be quicker. Uh, definitely quicker. Uh -huh. What is our best line setup right now? Hold on. I just want to see this for a quick minute. I just want to see what our what our lineup is like. 
and then line call ups and set them down lines. I want to see what our lineup is like. Because remember, these are the best line setup because that's been doing the best thing for us. So, Sedin, Galchernak, Nyquist, Cassian, Sedin, Johansson, Conjure, Benino, Jensen, and then Gotch, Richardson, and Vey. And then defensively, Fowler, him, he's Edler, Tanev, Siza. Yeah, they are starting Stanton instead of, uh, instead of Corrado. So, we could trade a guy like Frankie Corrado if we so wish. I think that would go straight up there too. Frankie Corrado for uh, Shane Doan. Obviously to boost up our boost up goal scoring. So let me add Doan back into this again. Scares match and block. All right, Shane Doan. And then we offer up Corrado. Frankie Corrado. He's young. He's 22 years old. I think that would go through, to be perfectly honest. And Corrado is up to about the R. Yeah, I think that would go through. I think it's a little bit more. Uh, does anything Phoenix have in return, maybe? To Linder. I'm not going to grab to Linder. There's no point in doing that. Draft picks. Uh, no. Let's see. Is there anything like really, really good that we can maybe get from them? High potential, maybe, but really low trade value. Uh-huh. They should know, no. Bomb six forward there and clink hammer, no, we don't need that. Colby Armstrong, no. Chipchura, Jung, no. Westland, no. There's nothing really else here. Alright, so I think that probably could go for a straight up trade here. Frankie Corrado and uh, straight up for Shane Doan, 81 overall. Two way, two way forward, a young two way forward. Honestly, I think he would uh, probably work out in Phoenix. I don't see a need for him here. We have Stanton, and we also have some younger defensemen coming up. Well, maybe. Hold on. Hold the phone here. Defensemen. Fowler, him. He's Edler, Tano, Spiza, Crado. We have Hogboom, Subban, Stanton, Gertsen. Gertsen, Subban, Hogboom, Spiza. We might have to trade for a defenseman maybe in the future. But, and besides, Corrado's playing, like, minor leagues. So he's in the AHL. He's not really getting any better. Stanton's playing in the NHL and getting experience at 26 with high potential to, to become a top four. So he could get a good boost this year if he wishes. Yeah, let's do that. We can make the trade. I think that would be a good trade. I think that'll go through straight up. Frankie Corrado for Shane Doan. All right, so let's do that. Frankie Corrado straight up for Shane Doan. Will it go through? Trade rejected. Uh, sweeten it just a touch. All right, so let's just throw a draft pick in there. Just throw a draft pick in there. And we'll give them a. We'll give them one of our six. We'll give them the Panthers' sixth round pick. All right. So that should go through. Frankie Corrado and a six for Shane Doan. Will that go through? Yes, it did. We believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in Arizona, so we're accepting your trade offer. All right. So we got some more offense added to the team now. I think that's the only thing we need to do. That's the only thing we, that we need to do. Shane Doan is now added to our team for one more year. Give up Frankie Corrado in, the, in return for it. But, you know. Something that needed to be done. All right, so let's go into uh, best lines here. Go into options. Best lines. All right, so there it is. So now the best lines are saying for Daniel Sedin, Alex Galchenyuk, and uh, Gustav Nyquist on the first. Shane Doan, Henrik Sedin, and Marcus Johansson on the second. Jensen, Benino, and Cassian on the third. And then Gotch, Richardson, and Kondra on the fourth. So Shane Doan gets slotted into that second line position on the uh, left wing to play with Henrik Sedin and Marcus Johansson. So a power forward, playmaker, two playmakers and a power forward on that line. Hopefully they can click together a little bit. Benino gets pushed down to the third with uh, Jensen and Cassian. Gotch, Richardson, and Conjure look good. Defense still the same. Fowler, Ham, Hughes, Edler, Tana, Spisa, Stanton. And then obviously in goalie, we have Miller and Lack. And then what are the uh, special teams looking like? So special teams, we have both Sedins, and Galchenik, Fowler and Edler, Johansson, Benino, Nyquist. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, extra, well, let me see the, what's the penalty kill looking like? Penalty kill, we have Gotch, Sedin, Richardson, Galchenyuk, Tano, Spiza. But yeah, we might as well just keep it the way they have it. Keep it the way we have it. I'm not going to mess around with this team. I think we can get it done. That was a good trade, I would think, for, uh, for Shane Doan as a part of our team now. And now we can go to the calendar. All right, so we can 
fly on by the trade deadline. We can get past these two games here against Ottawa and Anaheim. I think those are two big wins that we definitely need to uh, see if we can win those two games and uh, see how it fares there. So 4 nothing shutout of the uh, Ottawa Senators, which is good. Um, I will edit my trading block, though. Just put a couple guys on there. So we have go on to McCann, though. I'm going to remove those guys. So uh, if we had to put anybody up on the trading block, who would it be? I think the Sedins are fair game. I do think I do think they are fair game for trades as well as as well as Ham Hughes, not really all too much. He's 33. You can still keep him around for a couple more years. I think uh I think a guy like Ryan Miller is also possible uh trade bait. So we'll put those three guys up there. Actually, you know what? The one person I want to put up there is uh, Sebastian Auger is one of the players I want to put up there on the trading block. All right, Kevin Miller waiver claim. Do I want to pick up Kevin Miller? No, I don't want to pick up Kevin Miller. All right, let's see if we can win that game against Anaheim. We've been on a little bit of a roll as of late. And we do win that game 5-3, to three, so look at that. We have won a couple games here. Uh, we've won three in a row. We've won uh five out of our last six games and still gotten points in six straight games so this is the edge of trade deadline we don't need to do any trades here we're not going to look in and see views from any trades so let's get up to the end of the month vancouver is winning games so they just need to continue to win games maybe shane Doan on that on our team will help win some games who knows but this vancouver team is hot for the past couple months and you know what they just need to keep playing the way they're playing honestly just keep playing the way they're playing and let let uh, let the team do its job. Let the team do its job. There's another win, two to nothing over uh, Anaheim. All right, let's wait, do scouting. I do want to do the scouting uh, kind of a little bit at the end here too. I want to get a little bit more in depth before the draft comes up and actually see what I want to do. Uh, current scouting assignments is we scouted. We haven't scouted the guys in the uh, United States. So let's do them. There's not many. Uh, we can just do uh, we can just do two weeks for forwards. For full, yeah, for forwards in the uh, in the United States. All right, so there's another win against the Anaheim Ducks. Those are big wins too against teams in our division, which is nice. All right, Washington. Let's see if we can get a win against the Caps. And there's another win, four to two, four game win streak for. Actually, I think it's a six game win streak for the Vancouver Canucks. 31, 26, and nine. Maybe that acquisition of Shane Doan was good. Who knows? But we're winning games right now. St. Louis, they're under 500. And a shootout loss, that's okay. We do get a point for that. We'll take it. We'll take a point. And we were expected to get a loss sooner or later, but we do get a point for the loss. Colorado. It's a pretty big game here against Colorado. And we get a 3-2 to two win over the Avalanche. And we're continuing to roll here. I think we have points in, I think, our last nine games or so, nine or ten games that we've gotten points in. Chicago, best team in the NHL. Yeah, we were expected to lose that game 5-2. to two. All right, Boston. The Bruins here. Yeah, Bruins are the best team in the East. Uh, but we do get a win out of it. 4-3 to three win over the Bruins. So we're making a push here. We're definitely making a push. A lot of Eastern Conference teams coming up too. So Eastern Conference trip. 3-1 uh, to one loss to the Senators. That's okay. We've only had two regulation losses this month. Scouting's done already in the United States. I figured that much. All right, uh, let's take it to, yeah, let's do it here. One month for forwards in the OHL. Or I think that was the WHL, whatever. All right, so 33, 28, and 10. Um, two regulation losses this month is not bad. Tampa Bay, they're a tough team. Let's see if we can squeak out a point at least. There you go, or two points. I'll take it. Three to one win over the Lightning. All right, Florida now. Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers are... They're either around 500 and a 5-3 to three win over the Panthers. There you go. Back on track. Vancouver getting back on track. 35-28-10. That's a, that's a decent record. That's not a bad record. Pittsburgh, yeah, they're a tough team. And then Washington, a yeah, 5-1 loss to Pittsburgh. Seems we can't really beat the tough teams in the East. and uh, But we do get a comeback and get a win over the Capitals, 5-3. All right, so another very good month for the Canucks. A very good another month for the Vancouver Canucks uh, that we have, and a 5-2 win over the Dallas Stars as well. 
So there we go. We've won a couple games here. We're at 37, 29, and 10. That's a good record. And we're going up against it. Calgary has a good record. Minnesota has a good record. LA has a good record. And San Jose is in our division. So a lot of tough teams coming up here at the last last what two four six games left of the season so we have six games left in the regular season the vancouver canucks have jumped up to fifth place in our division still wells away behind i think the la kings maybe or maybe not i don't know we'll have to check out the stats let's check out the stats right now and the uh and the rankings so calgary and arizona have already clinched playoff spots vancouver is currently sitting at 84 points three points behind the Los Angeles Kings and if we take a look at the central right the central yeah the central division we are in a wild card spot so Minnesota Wild hold the hold the uh, wild card spot I think in their division actually it is LA and us so we hold the wild card right now we have the wild card position over the Minnesota Wild and the Edmonton Oilers by four points so we hold the last wild card spot. We just need to win some games. We need to win some games here. So Vancouver has pushed all the way back into a wild card slot. And now we just need to win win games. That's all we need to do, boys. We need to win some games here against this team. Against these teams. All right, so let's go to the calendar. And there are some tough opponents. Two games against Calgary. Uh, two games against San Jose, Minnesota, and the Kings. All right, so let's see if we can do some. Let's see if we can do it. Come on. Where we got four point, we got a four point lead in the wild card, which is two games. Let's see if we can continue here. Come on, boys, let's go, Vancouver. We can make it into this playoffs. I know we can. Let's go. Got to get some big wins here. Go against Calgary. They're a tough team. 43, 27, and eight. Back to back must be a home and home with them. It is a home and home with the Flames, and a four to one win and a three to two win. Those are four big points that we got out of the Calgary Flames. That is a big, big, big. Big four points that we got there. All right, let's go to the end <clears throat> end of this week against Minnesota and L.A. <clears throat> if we get a win, at least I think I think if we get three points, I think we're in. I think if we get three points, I think we are in the playoffs. All right, Minnesota, their team chasing us, four to one win. I think we're in the playoffs, boys. I think we I think the Vancouver Canucks have pushed all the way back to make the playoffs here. If we get a win against the Kings, there's no doubt in my mind we're in. 4-3 to three win over the Kings. Vancouver, 41-29-10. and 10. I think the Vancouver Canucks have made the playoffs. We might be even challenging LA for... We moved up to third in our division. We passed the LA Kings for third in our division. So, forget the wild card. Let's worry about maybe winning that third spot in our division. Yep, we clinched the playoff spot. The Vancouver Canucks have stormed all the way back after throwing on best lines and have made the playoffs. We currently have 92 points, so we are one point ahead of the LA Kings for the third spot in our division. We wanted to see if we can get that third spot in the division. So, uh, we are in the playoffs, which is good. And 85 is the wild card. And Anaheim Ducks have clinched one of the wild card spots as well. Actually, they could maybe... Yeah, they clinched one of the wild cards. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Those are the wild card teams. So, LA... L it's either LA or Vancouver is one of the wild card teams. Anaheim, no doubt, is a wild card team. Well, maybe. They can maybe make a run for the division. So, right now, you have Calgary and Arizona have already taken care of their thing. And uh, Chicago, Dallas, and Nashville have already taken care of their... Uh, their divisions. It's pretty much a three-way toss-up now for between Vancouver, LA, and Anaheim to see who's going to be getting the wild card spots. It looks like Anaheim could be more than likely the one of the wild card teams, but we have to see about the third, the uh, third seed in our division. And we have two te two games here against the San Jose Sharks to maybe possibly uh, determine that. So let's go here. Let's simulate. We're already in the playoffs, but we want to see if we can maybe win third seed in our division if we get a win here that's huge let's see if we can get a win here against the san jose sharks maybe come out of this little this home and home with them for actually no it's two home games oh my god we'd lose seven to nothing but we do get an over a shootout loss we get, at least we get one point out of the sharks in that game so uh let's see let's see if the kings have played 82 points we are still holding a uh Holding a lead over them in the division. If they played 82 games, then we are in. The LA Kings have played 82 games, and the LA and the Vancouver Canucks hold the season series over the LA Kings, even with more wins than us. Three more wins. We have six more overtime losses 
than we do, and we hold the season series over the LA Kings. So the Vancouver Canucks will get the third seed in the Pacific Division and probably will be taking on the Calgary Flames in the first round of the playoffs. So very good job, boys. Very good job this year. And I think we can take a look at the stats now. I think all the teams, every team in the NHL has played uh, 82 games. I just want to, let's just check it out. 82. Every team has played. Yep. All the teams are done this year. So very good. All right, so now we can check out all the stats. I don't know why I exited out of that. I wanted to take a look at everything, take a look at my Vancouver Canucks, who actually finished 10th in the NHL. So they stormed all the way back, finished 10th in the NHL with 93 points. Not a bad job. Montreal wins the Presidents with 114. So good job for the Vancouver Canucks. All right, so let's check out the total stats here for the team. That Shane Doan trade actually probably worked out. So goals four per game. Uh, I think we're down near the bottom. Yeah, we're still down near the bottom. For goals four per game, I think we're 30, 29, 28, 27, 26th worst team in the league for scoring goals at 2.56. So still need to work on our goal scoring. Goals against is at 2.5. It's one of the best. It is top five in the league for goals against per game. So we're not scoring that many goals, but we are keeping the puck out of the net. So that's good. All right. So it looks like we're very good defensively this year. Power play is at 18 point something was at 18.15, which is eh, roughly in the middle. Roughly in the middle. Not terrible. Not good, though. And the penalty kill was at 82%, I believe. Was at 82.3%, which I think is 3, 6, uh, 7, 8th best team in the league for penalty kill. And time shorthanded. Uh, one of the least teams shorthanded. How about power plays? Where were we at for times on the power play? Uh, we didn't have that many power plays either, so. All right, not bad. Home, we were 25-9 and 7 away. We were a negative team on the road at 16-21 and 4, but the last 10 games, 7-2 and 1. What a storm back for the Vancouver Canucks to make the playoffs, and it was all because of those line changes that kind of just paid off for us, to be perfectly honest. Those line changes really helped out. Separating the Sedin twins seemed to work. You know what? It's, it definitely seemed to work. All right, so. Daniel Sedin finished the year with, uh, let's go forwards first. Daniel Sedin finished the year with 68 points and 82 games for him. Alex Galchenyuk with 65 and 80 for him. And uh, Shane Doan finished with 63 and 84 for him. So he scored how many? Eight points, I think, in the remaining games that we played. So not many points, but you know what? He did have four more goals. Almost got to a 30-goal season for Shane Doan. So that actually, that trade seemed to pay off. It, the, the teams begin to win games. So... It paid off. All right, uh, Henrik Sedin with 59 points, so you know we might see the decline of Henrik Sedin, but you know what? They These two guys could retire at the end of the year as well, so you never know. Uh, Nyquist with 58 points for him. Nick Benino with 41. Marcus Johansson with 37. Eric Conjure had 21 points, so that's not bad for him. Nicholas Jensen with 20. Zach Cassian with 20. Uh, Gotch with 13. Richardson with uh, 13. Lyndon Bay had 10. Okay, and then the defensemen here, we had Dan Hughes and Cam Fowler both with above 40 points. Hughes with 47, and Cam Fowler with 40. Uh, Edler with 23, Tanev with 22, Spiza with 11, and Ryan Stanton with 10. And then goaltenders, Ryan Miller definitely came back and played. And uh, you know what? Props to Eddie Lack. He got over 500, so a bunch of you guys were... Bashing Eddie Lack, you know, he, he kind of fought back. I guess he must have played some games in there. He got above 500. So Ryan Miller with a 2.43. Eddie Lack with a 2.67. Miller went 31, 23, and 6. Eddie Lack went 10, 8, and 2. So Eddie Lack kind of broke 500, which is good. Uh, save percentage of 0.919 for Miller, 0.915 for Lack. Five shutouts for Miller, one for Eddie Lack. And point totals, Ryan Miller had one assist this year. So... Very good job by the Vancouver Canucks to fight back. Definitely, definitely, definitely did not see that coming. Made the trade for Shane Doan. It paid off. And the regular season has ended. We can advance a day. The regular season has ended. We can stop the simulation. Get ourselves an achievement. Home ice advantage. Don't know what that is all about. Um, I don't know why it says home ice advantage. We're not going to be hosting. We're not going to have the home game. We're going to be on the road. And now this is why the reason it sucks because um, I think you guys will maybe have to make a decision for this. So I'll check out. Let's check out the playoff tree first. Let's check out the playoff tree first. Let's see what the playoffs are looking like, and then maybe you guys can have a decision on this. All right. So here's what the playoffs look like for 
uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs here in year number two. Yeah, year number two for the uh, year number two. So uh, of this GM mode. So Dallas versus Nashville, Chicago taking on the uh, L Anaheim Ducks. They're already leading one nothing in the series. Calgary versus Vancouver, and then Arizona versus LA. LA is already up one nothing in that series. And then the East, you got Pittsburgh against Carolina, New York Islanders against Tampa Bay. The Islanders are already up one nothing in that series. Boston versus Toronto, and Montreal versus Ottawa. Ottawa is already up one nothing in that series. So we're taking on the Calgary Flames. We do not have home ice advantage in this series, but. Here's the decision you guys have to make with this. You guys are definitely the uh, the people that watch this series. You guys are the prime uh, decisions of what we should do for this thing. Now, technically, which sucks, which is one of the main reasons which I don't like NHL 15 GM mode, is they've taken out the uh, the in-game simulation of this of this uh, of the mode. So you can't actually just go in and simulate the first period, the second period, and then do like the six times times limit for the third period and watch what happens. Can't do that. You can either do two things. You can either, well, three, well, two. You can either simulate the game and just let it pass, or we can actually do go into the game itself and do an in-game simulation of each of each game. So you guys are can definitely tell me what you want to happen for this uh for this series i guess for this playoff so you can either take two things well i'll give you guys three options you can do one we can just simulate simulate the uh playoffs here against the calgary flames and whatever happens happens we could take it into the off season from there if we don't make it we can simulate each individual game or i can take all the the entire playoff series simulate the game and maybe put together a uh, highlight video for you guys so Whatever you want, I might be able. I might only do that for one ser one series at a time because that editing would take a shite ton of time. But I'll do it if you guys want to see it. So you guys can make the decision down there. I'll put three comments into the comment section down below, and you guys can leave a thumbs up for the one you want to see. So you can either once again, one, I could simulate just regular simulate the way we've been doing it for the regular season, simulate all the way through it, do that. Two, take an in-game sim, do an in-game simulation of, of the full game. And I could upload that. Or three, I can do the entire series, do the in-game simulation, and just record a highlight video for you guys and put that up there as well. So those three comments will be in the comment section down below. Thumbs up for the one that you guys want to see the most, and we will take it from there. So the Vancouver Canucks have made the playoffs, but we just have to decide how we want to do these playoffs. So make your decisions, guys, in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe as always, and I'll see you guys when we start our playoffs here in year two against the Calgary Flames.